Good morning, let's pray together. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy on those who fear him. Psalm 27 Psalm 27 of David The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, Seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. If every human ally forsakes us, if every friend gives up on us, if even our father and mother forsake us, the Lord will take us up. He is always faithful, always true, always there for us. Psalm 30 a psalm, a song, for the dedication of the temple of David. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. O Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction, in my going down into the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me, O Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing, you removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. In my prosperity I said I shall never be moved. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. Let's make sure that we are really uh, relying on the Lord in good times, that we don't become complacent or presumptuous, but we genuinely trust the Lord for his goodness uh, and realise our utter dependence upon him. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 31 to 62. This is part of Solomon's prayer of dedication of the temple. When a man wrongs his neighbour and is required to take an oath, and he comes and swears the oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants, condemning the guilty and bringing down on his own head what he has done. Declare the innocent not guilty, and so establish his innocence. When your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and confess your name, praying and making supplication to you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and when they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. 
When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besieges them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, and when a prayer or plea is made by any of your people Israel, each one aware of the afflictions of his own heart, and spreading out his hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive and act. Deal with each man according to all he does, since you know his heart, for you alone know the hearts of all men, so that they will fear you all the time they live in the land you gave our fathers. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name, for men will hear of your great name, and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When he comes and prays toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, and do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name, and fear you, as do your own people Israel, and may know that this house I have built bears your name. When your people go to war against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord toward the city you have chosen, and the temple I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and give them over to the enemy, who takes them captive to his own land, far away or near, and if they have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their conquerors, and say, We have sinned, we have done wrong, we have acted wickedly, and if they turn back to you with all their heart and soul in the land of their enemies who took them captive, and pray to you toward the land you gave their fathers, toward the city you have chosen, and the temple I have built for your name, then from heaven, your dwelling place, hear their prayer and their plea, and uphold their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you, forgive all the offenses they have committed against you, and cause their conquerors to show them mercy. For they are your people and your inheritance, whom you brought out of Egypt, out of that iron-smelting furnace. May your eyes be open to your servants' plea and to the plea of your people Israel, and may you listen to them whenever they cry out to you. For you singled them out from all the nations of the world to be your own inheritance, just as you declared through your servant Moses when you, O sovereign Lord, brought our fathers out of Egypt. When Solomon had finished all these prayers and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord, where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out toward heaven. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice, saying, Praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. May he never leave us nor forsake us. May he turn our hearts to him, to walk in all his ways, and to keep the commands, decrees, and regulations he gave our fathers. And may these words of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night, that he may uphold the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. But your hearts must be fully committed to the Lord our God, to live by his decrees and obey his commands, as at this time. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. As Solomon prayed, he thanked God that he had chosen and called Israel. But he acknowledged that God was the God of all the earth, of all people of the earth. So likewise, when a foreigner, who is not one of your people Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, because they've heard of your name, when they come and pray, answer their prayer too. So here Solomon is praying, you know, prophetic praying, declaring that uh, the Lord calls from every nation those who honour his name. Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 24. Chapter 16. He came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewess and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. 
So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to, so they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day on to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Theatera, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. In this passage we read of Paul and his Macedonian vision. He got the, the vision of a man from Macedonia pleading, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Around the world there are those who have not heard the gospel, who are calling out, Come over and help us, not knowing what help they need. They need to hear the gospel message. So Paul and his team went to Macedonia. They landed first at the, uh, in, uh, in the city of Philippi and began to preach the gospel there. On the Sabbath they met those who gathered for prayer and uh, baptised uh, a number of them, including Lydia. The uh, city had its challenges. They were thrown in prison because they cast an, uh, an evil spirit out of a, a slave girl and uh, we will read in, in tomorrow what happened to them in prison but at the moment they are determined to preach the gospel where God had called them. Didn't automatically mean it was going to be easy or God was going to prepare a smooth path for them. They went over to Philippi and found themselves in prison. Sometimes we think that when we come against difficulties or hardships Perhaps we have misheard the voice of the Lord, but actually that may not be the case as with Paul here. Let's pray together. Our Father, we pray that we will be faithful in calling out to all people and inviting all to come to the uh, Saviour. Lord, we pray that you will help us to hear the voices of those around the world who have never heard the message of the Gospel those who are calling out for our help, Lord, that we will be faithful in taking the gospel out to those in desperate need. Lord, we pray that we will trust you, even when things seem to be going not quite so well. But Lord, we will trust in your calling, and Lord, we will uh, be led by your Spirit. So Lord, we commit to you this day and the uh, activities we are going to engage in. Lord, we pray for wisdom in decision-making. Lord, we pray for courage in our walk. 
that Lord we can be faithful to you in all that we do. God who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel that always abiding in you they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen 